Lesbian Talk, episode 107. This time he didn't be like, it's episode... <laughs> well, yes, because you whipped me last time I did that, and yep. I cried. Yep. I cried inside. I want to hurt myself. No, you didn't. You took a picture and sent it to Hagenista, and then... I don't know what's happening right now. We're talking about Thanksgiving. It just happened, like, this week. All right, well, last week. Apparently it happened. I, 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 Americans tell me it happened. I'm like, okay, you're celebrating stuff that preludes genocide. Awesome. That's not how it's explained to children. Yeah, I know, but, you know, you have 300 years after an event like that, and then it, horrible things happen, and then it gets whitewashed, you know? It's, it doesn't really matter how it's explained to children. Y'all had a party with the Native Americans, and then you killed them. Well, it's never actually been historically confirmed that the first Thanksgiving actually happened. Well, that's true. But at the same time, the story, it's... its uh, As an outside observer looking at the thing, it looks like you lulled them into a false sense of security, and then you killed them. Well, in all fairness, the people that did the genocide were, like, not the same people that were like, Peace, brother. Let's oppress women and eat pie. Puritans were very into that. Yeah. So, and the hats, with the buckles on them. Yes. So, we're going to discuss that sort of thing, and as you can guess, I'm going to already be controversial about it, but she made me watch a film. I did, because I had a strange cultural experience. A film? Well, here, we should probably, for those of you, our listeners, who are European, and who haven't bothered to look up the wiki for Thanksgiving, basically the story behind the holiday is that... Um, the, the pilgrims, who were Puritans, um, came to America, came to the colonies, um, because they, they wanted, well, they wanted less oversight in, on a lot of their things and part of their lives, and, and freedom of religion was one of those things. <laughs> well, sure. No, the Puritans were pissed off and left Europe because they had, we'd have, the rest of the guys had had enough of their shit and their theocracy, and so they went, went off to America in order so they could oppress people and not have everyone else destroy well, them with the ravages of religious tolerance. Basically, freedom of religion was very important to them. Freedom of their religion and yes. no one else's. So, so they, they undertook a, a sea journey very late in the season. They were advised against this, but they went anyway. Because they're dumbasses. They nearly, they nearly sunk. In, uh, in the, cause it's very stormy in, in the North Atlantic. It's cold and miserable, and it's just horrible. And it's, you know, hurricane season as well. And so they were blown a lot, of course. They meant to settle in Virginia, but they ended up in New England and Massachusetts. Dumbass. And so they landed on Plymouth Rock, which Virginia's is a big Rock. place. How do you miss that? Well, America's a big place. Yeah. I mean, you just kind of have to aim and hope for the best, really. If you don't have, like... You know, the best you have is, like, a sextant and, like, the stars when you can see them. Listen, honey, honey, honey. <laughs> I don't want to say you're several hundred times smarter than the Puritans, but you, several hundred times, you've tried to get to Virginia, and you've succeeded every time. I have GPS, though. Yeah? So, you made it to Virginia. They didn't. They yeah, failed, because... You succeed. You know, because it said, take the exit on the left at I-395. Yeah. Recalculating. Take the exit on and the right. And you didn't end up in New England. But I... Anyway. But so they... It was a lot colder than they reckoned it would get, because they'd only known, you know, the climate of the UK... And it, they nearly starved. A lot of them died. There was rampant disease. They nearly had to turn to cannibalism. And by all accounts... That would have been hilarious. The local Native Americans were like, I, I, come come here. Come here. All right. Uh, let me show you. Here's how you make food from the ground. And a year later, there was an abundant harvest. And they were like, wow, remember how we almost died last winter? That sucked, but it's not. So let's give Thanksgiving unto the Lord, and we'll have a big feast and we'll invite our Native American friends. And then their descendants will regret this for the rest of time. No, would you hush? And so basically, that's the story of Thanksgiving as, it is, as you learn it as you're a child. And then you trace your hand. You put your hand and you trace it. And then you make a turkey out of it, because these are the feathers on the top. And then you make the thumb. What? You do. You, you, you take your handprint and you trace no, it, right? No, you do. I mean, like one would. And then you can decorate that handprint like a turkey. This is a thing that happens. If you've done this, write the show. She's giving me a look. And then a lot of things we do is we make pilgrim hats out of black construction paper and Indian headdresses, and then the class would be split in two, and some of us would be pilgrims, some of us would be Indians. This is also a real thing we used to do. That's also very problematic. This was, this was in the... 
This is in the early 80s. Hey, this is this what we did. <clears throat> you know. Sorry if you were bothered by the quality and the timber of our voices, uh, but we're both sick to varying degrees. So, this is what you get. Sorry, lesbian fans. Maybe another time. The only thing... <clears throat> the, only, the only good thing out of the whitewashed pa uh, pastel version of Thanksgiving that American children get is clearly that bit in uh, Adam's Family Values. Oh, yeah. Yeah! That was, that was Fuck a great yeah, movie. Wednesday Adams. That was, that was a really great movie. Well, no, but that like, was better than the first one. Simply that, yeah. People say about that sequels are never as good as the originals. Fuck you, Adam's Family Values. Uh, there's other ones too, obviously. But like, uh, when it comes to the Adams Family, the only two good versions, apart from the original comics, uh, uh, cartoon, sorry, <clears throat> are the '60s live action one, which was very silly and campy, and then the Adams Family Values, which was nice and dark. The first Adams Family feature film by Sonnenfeld felt like an uncomfortable mix of the two tones. Well, I did really enjoy Adams Family Values. But awesome. then, when they woke up the next morning, all of their old noses had grown back. But, um, so... We're, we're basically, we're, we have a, a special thing that we're going to do in December. And I guess we can talk a wee bit about it now, just to reveal the title. It's going to be The Christmasing, is what it's going to be called. Oh, God. Lesbian Talk presents The Christmasing. And so all I was preparing for that, I was on YouTube and, and Daily Motion and Torrent sites, and I got to wondering, and I looked up this, this Rankin-Bass uh, television special that we had taped off TV sometime in the early 80s. So we had on Is it Rankin-Bass or Bass Rankin? I don't know. I've heard it both ways, but it's Rankin-Bass on the, on the logo. Okay. So. Um, so we had taped it off. And so I had this on VHS for most of my childhood. It was called A Mouse on the Mayflower. And so I would watch it, you know, every, you know, maybe like twice a year or something like that. And so I wondered, oh, is, is it on Daily Motion? And it was. It was 45 minutes. I'm like, all right, I've got 45 minutes. So I think I was waiting for things to download. So I watched it, and I'd, I'd seen it quite often when I was a child, but it, it just struck me as being very strange from my perspective now. So I said to Zahagen, I said, I, I have something that I want you to watch as, as a foreigner, you know, as someone who's outside of American culture, and see if you're as, like, about as weirded out by it as I was watching it now. For I... Although I am mistaken for an American in my everyday life, quite often, I am... Li America is literally foreign. Yeah. <coughs> and so The Mouse and the Mayflower tells a story of, you know, as is usual in Rankin-Bass animations, you know, some historical thing except from the context of mice. It's... Because, like, there's, there's, a, there's The Night Before Christmas, which is told from a, the context of a mouse, I think... The stingiest man in town is told from the context of a mouse. They had a real thing about mice, but... Like many Bass Rankin films, it is the tale of a group of people trying to rip off Disney with one half of the budget. As animated by Toa E Productions. Yeah. But, um... So what were your opinions? And if you want to go watch the... If you want to go watch the special, it's on Daily Motion. It's not on YouTube, but it is on Daily Motion. Well, you know, as the person who became famous originally on the internet from my Bone Kickers reviews, mm -hmm. I was complaining about historical accuracy somewhat. Well, so was I. Like, one of the shots of the Mayflower has them flagging both the English flag and the Union Jack. And, and I was stopping to think, like, why would, why would you do that? Why, because specifying that your UK ship is an English ship rather than potentially an Irish, Welsh or Scottish ship would just make you a big target to the French and the Spanish. Well, the French and Spanish wouldn't care what part of the UK you're from. So I, I have no idea if, if, if it would like, be useful to have like, both flags. I, I was thinking about that. Would you not you know, want to curry favor by flying a Scottish flag? No, because the know? Scottish were part of the UK. Yeah, but well, then they were, they were better friends with France. And before, the UK, before the Act of Union. Before that. You told me that afterwards, they're still, to this day, they have still kind of a thing. Well, they, they occasionally, it's, but it's not like a, a, a proper military thing. At the time when the Mayflower happened, the English and Scottish Parliament, th that was around the time the, the full-on Act of Union happened. Well, wait a minute, the, would country. the Union Jack look... Because they, they were flying a yeah. modern Union Jack. Yeah, they would, Ireland didn't join until about 100 years later. Okay, so they would, they would have been flying the old style. I believe Union Ireland Jack. was a colony at the time, essentially, and it had its own parliament, which was subservient to London. And Wales the, gets London. nothing. What, what, Wales is part of England when it comes to these th matters, because they know, were just, conquered in the 12th century. But then, but then we realized, we were trying to figure out the naval reasons, and we realized probably the animators just, oh, well, they're from England, so the English flag. Yeah. Well, I was complaining about uh, things like I, 
Okay, I know very little about the Mayflower. Um, this is not deliberately an accident. This is not just an accident, you know, I don't particularly want to learn about it, but I'm pretty sure they left Plymouth, and then they went to Holland to pick some guys up, and then they went to America, rather than, as they showed in this one, went straight from England to America. Well, I mean, I think Miles Standish <laughs> might have been Dutch. Because, I don't know, Miles is spelled with a Y. It doesn't seem, it seemed like an English, English would spell it. Oh, is that the Falstaff guy? Yeah. Okay. And then he says that he was given that, that medal by the King of Holland, yeah. not the King of England. So that's, it's very, yeah. if you, if you know right there, I mean, we could Google it, but, you All know. these pure Puritans are like, we have to get away so we can worship in peace because someone threw a tomato at yeah. our door. One person throws a tomato at the church door and they're like, oh, I've had it with this religious intolerance. After decades of <coughs> them being in charge <coughs> religiously. God damn it, Cromwell. And kicking the shit out of everyone who wasn't them. Then other people are suddenly uh, getting to do what they like and they just have a hissy fit and leave and it's like yeah the english civil war part and oliver cromwell is never mentioned like basically you're told they were, were persecuted for their religion so they went to they the were new persecuted world. for being dicks <laughs> you know they, 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 these, these fuckers when they were in charge of the uk this is one of the reasons the, this is they were literally made the uk into well england technically into a into a, the, a theocracy yeah and then your man the party king actually Technically, the UK is a theocracy because the Queen is the defender of the faith. But they made the country much more have much more religious laws. They banned Christmas, as I understand <gasps> it. Oh, that would be a really great animated special. Wait, Cromwell wait. stole Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> oh, somebody. Okay, so whoever's listening to this and whoever arts do that. I, I really would love to see like you know box art or cover art for how Cromwell stole Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, you can the, you can take it in a Grinch direction, you can take it in a Disney direction, but that would be great if anyone wants to do that. The Puritans. Post in the comments. The Puritans of that period were not a million miles removed from, you know, the guys in charge of Iran. You know, they had similar sort of control of things, really ridiculous religious laws. Some of them uh, even banned things like music. They... It was insane. It was wearing of bright colors. It, it, they had similar laws. They weren't as far gone as, say, the Taliban, but if they had enough time and enough will, oh, they would have done that sort of shit too. You know, they would kill people for breaking their laws as well. It's the, the same sort of thing. It's like, imagine if you, the Iran, oh, the people of Iran overthrew uh, the... the... Ah, the guy in charge right now. Prime Minister? No, he's not in charge of that. The supreme leader, the, the Ayatollah, Ayatollah Khamenei, who is the guy right now, not Khamenei. Khamenei. Because he's dead. Yes, Khamenei. this is the Khamenei is in charge right now. Imagine they overthrew him and got rid of all the fundamentalism, and they became more like oh, hippy dippy and stuff. And then you had some of the fundamentalist ones were still there, and then they decided to piss off and conquer. I don't know, Wexford. And then hundreds of years later, you've got the people of Wexford. You know, the the, the Muslims of Wexford talking about how evil the the other guys were, and how they were all into tolerance. It's, it's ridiculous! Because they were oppressed in England, they left no, to they find weren't. greener shores. This is, a, this, is, this is the world's greatest example of how a privileged group losing privilege and gaining equality feels like oppression. Pumpkin pie! Because everyone else getting to be on the same level as them felt so horrible to them that they pissed off and took their theocracy to the fucking Americas. That's why the UK since then has been much more secular. Yay. It has though. Like, it's a very secular country. <clears throat> for having the queen being the head of religion is a very secular country. And of course, we also got like schools. We're taught religion in schools. We are. We have all these sort of very religious things in our culture. We don't take a shit ton of it seriously. We don't take any of it seriously. Fair play. I mean, my uh, my country's rapidly becoming deliverance. So I guess I, I can't. I can't really comment. I I, I my my feel my suggestion is that um, part of the reason the UK is so secular um, is probably because we have religious education. Because in the mind of the student, they mix religion up with school. You're taught, you have to do prayers and stuff before class. It's fucking I think boring. Anglicanism is so, like, you know... I, I mean, nobody ever talks about martyrs or, like, having a holy crusade. They kind of just talk about the vicar and tea. Yeah, and cucumber sandwiches. But and, and, you know, what's the one, uh, all things bright and beautiful? The, the hymn? Yeah. 
It's just kind of just very like, and grass is lovely and trees are great. It's like a Shel Silverstein poem. It's like those it's like those prayers that, that the the Baha'is do, which is like God is really awesome and the world is really great. And we have and flowery ev- language. And everything would be really wonderful if everybody would be really great. And someday God will come back and everybody will be really great to each other. That'll be awesome. Let's think about this now for five minutes of silence. Awkward silence during which nature sounds will play. Ready, go. And you can't look at your phone. Ready, go. And I'm like, oh, that was a pretty <laughs> prayer, but the awkward, the awkward, I need my phone. But uh, UK culture is set up in such a way to convince younger people that religion is full of shit and it's boring as fuck. And so they keep away from it. And this is possibly why America's way it is as well. America, because it's not allowed in schools, because it's, it's taboo, suddenly it's a bit like drugs. It's like, we're not allowed to do this on some level. Mm-hmm. So they want to do it. Don't make that face. It'll freeze that way, and then you'll become Richard Dawkins. <laughs> and then what will happen? No, but so like, but, but, but that's the story that you're told as a kid, and like we we watched this we watched this this special, and like I hadn't realized how I don't know it just it felt really weird because it was narrated the main character and the narration was uh, Tennessee Ford, who um, he passed away several years ago, but he was a singer and voice actor, and um, he's the guy that sang, that sang and popularized that, the, you know, you load 16 tons, what do you get? He's very deep, and his voice is beautiful. His speaking voice is really great. Um, I don't let, not as big of a fan as, of a singing voice, but, so he, so it does carry some gravitas, but like, I don't know, it just seems really weird because all the pilgrims had American accents, like, even though they were supposed to be English, and like, the, the, the head preacher, had a New England accent, and he sounded like he was literally had a syringe full of quaaludes injected directly into his spine. That's the guy who looked just like Prince Adam from He Man. It was hilarious. He was like, what is that, dear sweet beautiful Lord? What is yeah, that? Yeah, I, I I tell you, after seeing uh, American Horror Story Roanoke, I uh, I have just got no patience anymore for things said in that period with English people that. Don't try to do the amazing um, OP pronunciation. Uh, the sort of one, the reconstructed Shakespearean English that they've done because, through uh, looking at how rhymes work in Shakespeare and reading people's letters and stuff to work out how it sounds. They did the same sort of thing with Latin. But, it, oh man, it sounds awesome. You should hear... <coughs> you have to hear Kathy Bates in that. She sounds like a Scottish pirate. It is Aces. awesome. <laughs> Although, bonus fact, we, um, we used to go to the Outer Banks. My, my mother's family would holiday in the Outer Banks um, in the summer. And one year, uh, we went down the same week. And we were driving down, and my dad was like, oh, do you want to go to Roanoke, the Lost Colony? And my sister was like, fuck yeah, we want to go to Roanoke, the Lost Colony. And we got to Roanoke, the Lost Colony. And we found out that there's a reason why it's called the Lost Colony. It's because there's fuck all there. Except for these, like, you know, like gardens that you can wander around in. Didn't they actually take all the buildings down before they left? Yeah. And, but the gardens were full of two things, bees and big, huge, fuck-off southern wasps. So we went to the other thing that was at Roanoke, the Lost Colony, which was the gift shop. And my dad was like, do you want to buy anything? And I was like, oh, this, like, old-timey, like, children's top looks pretty cool. Can I get it? My dad's like, oh, it's only a dollar. You sure you don't want anything else? I was like, no, that's grand. My sister wanted this big, like, five-dollar, like, ancient, like, uh, not ancient, but, like, old-timey map of, you know, of the area, and for some, I don't know why she wanted, she pitched a fit, and she screamed and cried and hollered, and, like, threw a temper tantrum, and finally my parents bought it, oh, I'm sorry, it was four ninety five. you know, just so we could leave, you know, and in the end, I was the one that ended up with it on my wall, like, years later, in my first flat, but that has nothing well, to do with Thanksgiving. American Horror Story told us, like, what happened to the Lost Colony? They, they left because they were starving and they went and interbred with the Croatan? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, they, they did leave well, because they were starving, but they went further inland to, uh, to what was now you know, inland North Carolina, where they decided to stay and where they were starving even more until finally Kathy Bates, uh, in a mimicking of the Blair Witch story, was sort of, she, was in, she was in charge and she was cast out into the forest. <laughs> and then a witch of some sort came to her. <laughs> and this witch was, was Lady Gaga. And of basically, course. Fed her a heart of a, of a pig, and then she became her slave, and then she murdered all the other ones there. And then they all became ghosts living in this area, murdering anyone who comes to stay in the area. 
and adding to their collection of, uh, of ghosts under her thrall. And uh, Croatoan is actually not a reference to Croatoan Island. It's actually a word of, de of defense you can use to defend yourself against the ghosts. Oh. Well, I like better what really happened. Yeah. The fact that they were starving <laughs> to death and went and uh, interbred with a local Indian tribe. Like, to this day, the descendants of that tribe, some of them have, like, blonde or, you know, blonde hair or brown hair or, like, you know, blue or hazel eyes. So I think we, we've solved the mystery. Yeah, but there's happened. multiple accounts of, of people, this either descendants of or po possible ones captured. You know, yeah. some like with that tribe, other ones were captured and enslaved by other tribes, you know. Yeah. Pretty much. So we know, we, we pretty much know what happened at Roanoke, the, the lost, lost colony. colony. But, yep, Megan Arthur is still yeah. a, a fucking hilarious, though. It's, I, 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 it's wonderful. That's like the greatest coked out soap opera ever. I love it. I'll watch it eventually. Well, I have it bookmarked on yet on Netflix. Of course, I've had it book, bookmarked on Netflix since the first season, but I'll, I'll get around to it eventually. Well, I have it all on DVD. I know. I want to show it to you. I, I know. Show you I, Game of I just, I'm, once I'm done with academic stuff, I, I always say, but then another academic thing comes yeah. up, and then... You never would say, I'll cry! Well, no, because I have a paper to finish, and if the, in all fairness, if I can get this paper perfect, I can get it published, and that's really big. I have another coursework, and then I'm off Will they read Christmas. about it in Roanoke, The Lost Colony? The Lost Colony. We have to keep saying that. Um, but then I have one more piece of coursework before the term ends, but then I have to start studying for exams after Christmas, because I have two exams, and then the term will start again. You know that there's actually a movie called Roanoke, The Lost Colony? Is it a horror movie, or is it a documentary? Yes, it's a horror movie. Oh, Jesus. It stars Adrian Paul from Highlander, the TV show, and Merlin, the return. Uh, and <laughs> if I remember correctly, because I've seen this... They're attacked by the ghosts of Vikings. What? Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, this thing is there's so many historical inaccuracies, and honestly, there's. I swear, there's like I really would... weird, like trippy songs in the middle. Like this one young woman, like has this like Disney esque fantasy about like you know getting asked out by, like, the young man who's caught her fancy and who he has... her fancy is... You know, they, they, they the guy she wants to fuck. Yeah. He's like, my master, Captain Standish, sends his regards, but I would like to give you something. It's the D. You know? I cannot... I cannot imagine how horrible it must be for... A kid, Native American kid, growing up in the thing and having to hear every Thanksgiving. I mean, like, I was bullied as a child because of Christmas, because growing up non-Christian in a very Christian area, and to this day, I dislike Christmas. Well, actually, somebody on on uh, on the Ask Reddit subreddit said, you know, American Indians or you know Native or Aboriginal people, how did you celebrate Thanksgiving? And like, I I only read like through half the thread because I had several thousand answers. But like a lot of the top ones were, we just got together to watch for the football and you know eat dinner. It wasn't really like about a thing. It's more about like having a family dinner and stuff like that. Mm. And like one guy said, you know that you know other people have answered similar, with the exception of like my my grandmother. You know she had been, you know, got had forced into going to like a boarding school and everything, and so she would not allow any mention of the Washington game. Like the men would go off, slink off into the shed, you know, to listen to the radio and get the scores, and she knew what was happening. But as long as you didn't mention it, she was fine. You know, she didn't have any, like, you know, any other issues with, like, you know, the Atlanta Braves or anything like that. But the Washington Redskins, it just really, ups you know, offended her. And so she would not hear any mention of that team. And everyone was like, fair play. Yeah. It must be really, really sort of existentially rough. You know, your yeah. your people, you, that your people who in the story don't look at me and say you people. No, no, my no, people were no. still in Europe. <laughs> I was talking about actually the Native Americans people. Oh. The in the story of the the Mayflower, the the pilgrims were a bunch of cunts. Uh, the Native Americans were went above and beyond the cause of niceness in helping them, and then they all got killed. Well, and also the uh, the fact that like I, I don't know if this is true for everyone, but I've heard some people from some tribes be like, well. You know, tribes from, like, you know, the Pacific Northwest or, like, you know, the Mid-Atlantic area or, like, you know, the, the, you know, the Southeast, we're, like, totally different from them. You know, don't lump us all together. Well, and yes. it makes me wonder, like, if, you know, a Pueblo kid would have a different opinion of Thanksgiving than, like, a kid who's, you know, it's descended from yeah. the Iroquois. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's not, there's... Actually, if you're Native American, except for you, Shark Wayne, 
because you could just always tell us on Facebook because we're friends in real life. Now, if, you, if you're Native American and you ha want to comment on this, please comment below because we want to know, you know, we're Well, yeah, it's wrong to consider uh, all Native Americans yeah. the same because, you know, it's an entire fucking continent. It's like saying, like, all Europeans the same, which, you know, <laughs> it's really stupid. Well, we know how wrong that is. Yeah, but how many, uh, you know, in uh, showing my lack of knowledge here, so I'd love to be corrected if uh, stroke informed, Existent, still existent Native American tribes. There's less of them on the eastern seaboard, aren't there, than say this in the center parts or the or the western west coast. I don't know, because I want to say that because in the southwest and the west coast and stuff like that, you have reservations. I mean, I'm sure there's some a lot of them the moved to the reservation. A lot of them were moved from the east coast, I think, to other parts that were less hospitable. Yeah, but I think they were from they were from the edge of the Midwest. I don't know if any of the eastern mm -hmm. tribes. I think the eastern tribes have just been there. Like, that's where the the white man's presence was the oldest. Yeah, that's know? why I'm thinking that's probably why... The, why it, it feeds into my logic that there's probably yeah. less there. Because A, I've heard of less ones there. And B, the white guys have been there for long enough so there's like, more chance them, for them to kill them. Yeah. So, it's like, someone who knows anything about this, please give me information. Well, I remember, like, there are... There are um, I think there are still some of the New York Iroquois around. Well, that's cool. Because I remember seeing documentaries about this in high school. I think there are still some Lenape Lenape around. They're the, the, we call them the Delaware, which is where you get the Delaware River, Delaware Valley, you know, the state of Delaware. Delaware County. Delaware County, exactly. Delco, born and raised. But, but yeah. Delco gets name dropped in one of my episodes, Genesis 7. Hey, days. boy. It's even, is it, it's, Oh, it's, it's worse than... It reminds me of hell out there. Oh, is it even worse than Albany? Oh, it's even worse than Delco. Delco is awesome. I'm Delco all the way. Although, like, I do follow a few um, meme pages on Facebook. Or it's, like, Meanwhile in Delaware County. And it really is just... It is kind of classic because it's totally, like, slagging off, like, Yaden and Clifton Heights. And, like, you know... All if you those, know what she's... All those parts of Delaware County. Right, the show if you know what she's talking about. I know. Pretty much. But the, the other things about this... Oh, 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 that and... Oh, man. Remember when the bazaar was still on McDade? Yeah. The, the, the bazaar was great. It was like this this indoor shopping center. And it was ah. really awesome. Well, the, the other things with this film that just really irritated me with the inaccuracies. The, the fact that the mouse saved the day. <laughs> and we're pretty sure that didn't happen in real life. Well, yeah, there's that. There's... <laughs> there's these two evil sailors. Yeah! And their evil plan... Okay. First of all, the captain is kind of... The Vulcan skull. The, the captain is drawn and animated in such a way, like, that he seems like some kind of, like, evil, nefarious mastermind. And, like, but he's made out to be, like, evil and nefarious because, you know, these, these religious pilgrims who have hired him, they've hired him, his crew, and his ship to make a cross-Atlantic voyage at basically, like, you know, the ass end of summer. You know, when they're going to have... It, it's It's... Hurricane season, they're gonna have to fight the storms in the North Atlantic. It's very dangerous, and they like make out that he's like so horrible for asking them. Um, so you did bring the money to pay me, right? And then the sailors, regardless of the fact that a share of that is theirs because they work for the captain, they work for the ship. You know, they're like their nefarious plan is we'll wait till a really bad storm comes, and then heavily suggest to the captain that we abandon ship. You know, we abandon this really valuable ship yeah. without need. And then, when no one's looking, we'll take the gold. Like, the Onto idea... a lifeboat in the middle right. of the North Atlantic. That, like, this implies that, one, no one's going to be watching the gold. And that's, that's the gold that's going to pay for repairs for the ship. It's going to pay the sailors' wages. It's going to buy supply. No. That's not how nautical works. Yeah, and then you've got this one evil Native American who's, like, sees all the white people and wants to kill his, them. His name is, like, Spitting Buzzard or something like something that? Something like that. It's like... That guy was the only smart one there. And then... And there's no female American Indians. They're all yeah. graves. And so the, this one who decides he wants to kill the, the, the white people because, you know, he's sensible, he gets exiled on the strength of making a face. And no, then... he's like... I, I think it's implied that in their language, he said... Because he swings his axe around. He basically says, I think we should go down there and massacre him. Massacre all of them. They all jump on him, beat him up, and kick him out the tribe. Yeah. It's like, dude... That's not that's not enough to exile someone. You just you disagree and you. Uh... Although, 
your man the mouse implies that he was quote unquote fired from the tribe. That could have just been like, would you go piss off until you can cool your head down? Well, maybe. But then he teams up with these white sort of scumbag guys. The two it's evil like, sailors. It's like, you know, he wants to murder all the white guys, and he got, he got these two clearly evil people, and they decide, you know, we're all evil together. It doesn't matter that our type of evil wants to kill their type of evil. Let's just hang out. Yeah, they think with that, a bear. They think that oh, we'll incite we'll incite a massacre, and then when no one's looking, we'll row back to the ship, take the gold, and, and then. then Why didn't they just wait until they left the pilgrims off, right? Because then the ship was obviously sailing somewhere else, you know. Because it doesn't we'll sail the ship by ourselves. Yeah, it doesn't mention that. That he that he that he would it doesn't mention that they winter the ship there because the only people that are seen like starving and dying and stuff are the pilgrims so it's pretty much implied that they're gonna sail somewhere else now to to you know probably s sail south towards a uh, you know towards Florida or something like that before they can cross back you know over and the, the the captain might have more work lined up you know they might be sailing for the West Indies you know for trade like why not just wait until it's just the crew and then take the gold. I liked how uh, the film started in, not started, but you know they they show they're in London and they're all like, oh, we're telling about we're in our church and we're telling about tolerance and everyone hates us and then we're gonna sail to America and then I look at the fucking church top of the church and you can fucking see Plymouth Harbor. They stayed in there in London. I don't know if Americans, Plymouth. <coughs> <coughs> Plymouth is not the same place as London. You know, they have the, we in the English language we have these things called letters, and you put them in a particular order, and you create words. And London is not the same word as Plymouth. Yeah, but maybe, maybe the script had to be revised because what Toei thought they were doing got lost in translation somehow. But, but anyway, that was, and then it ends on this prayer, and it ends on this, you know, and again, it's your man's beautiful, smoothest, butter voice reading out this bit from one, some, somewhere in the Bible. And then, but then it's juxtaposed over, like, a picture of, like, the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, not, not a photograph, like an animation. And the Hoover Dam. And, and Mount Rushmore. Now, this was done in 1968. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that those things aren't in New England. And, like, a waving American flag. Yeah. Now, that's definitely not time-appropriate American flag. Yeah. It would just been like one star. And, and they're also talking about how the this this you know, Plymouth Compact thing where they, they oh yeah they they say that the Plymouth Plymouth Compact became what was the basis for all current American laws, which is totally and it's not like true. they they created laws because they created a new colony. Fair enough. You already knew there was a colony in Virginia. They must have already done it there. Why is yours more important, you pricks? Oh, because those guys. Oh, well, they're Virginians. We don't want anything to do with them. They might not be you know, Puritans. Well, I mean, the thing is, if you think about it, um, wasn't Virginia a... Uh, it was a commercial venture, the Virginia colony, in the beginning, wasn't it? I don't know. I'm fairly sure that it was. Again, if you know for reals, write the show, but... To be fair, Derry was a commercial venture, too. And look how but, well it But London Derry, Derry existed before that. But, yeah. So, oh, and so I worked on Black Friday. And by work time, I meant I had a nine and a half hour shift because Foilside, um, the shopping center where my shop is, um, has decided we're going to do Black Friday. Like, it's so, it's so cute because, because, because basically like, I, I heard about Black Friday in America and it's really great and people make tons of money so we can do it here too. But they have no idea what they're doing. Yes. Like the center stayed open an extra hour. So I had a nine and a half hour shift, which is fine because, I mean, I got paid for it, but like... We didn't even have a queue, you know, in the morning. You know who our first customers in the morning was? The same first customers every Friday morning. All the wee little old people coming in to buy the Dairy Journal, the Friday edition, and the Daily Mail, and Daily Express, and the Daily Mirror. Like, yeah. And, and we had some old electronics, like some, like, iPad docks and things like that. that had been no one had bought. They'd been sitting around, so we, like, drastically reduced them and, like, printed out a sign that said Black Friday Sale. And, like... Nothing sold. Like, like Top Model had a big sign in the window saying, Black Friday sale, four days only. Yeah, that's because the UK... I'm going to do something I yell at Hagen for. Oh, oh no! I'm Thursday, I need it. You see, because we don't have Thanksgiving, Black Friday is A, not... It's just a regular day. And, and no, it's not like people are off work or anything. Yeah, it's just a regular day. So, and they're just trying to make it a thing when there's no uh, cultural... 
uh, uh, foundation already there. Because you guys, you're off that day anyway. It makes yeah. sense to have a thing. And plus, UK, we already have a traditional this time of year sort of shopping crazy time. And that starts at Boxing Day. And the cool thing about Boxing Day is foil side is closed. Yeah. So my shop is closed. So I get Christmas Day and then Boxing Day off. It's fantastic. I love having the day after Christmas off. Yeah, the uh, so <laughs> go shopping. Fuck that Netflix and chill. <laughs> so the the rest of the world does Black Friday, or, or but the UK just just like it's very half-hearted, and I'm really proud of that. I know, like I I had to to go to the uni early in the morning. I was a uh, meeting with my professor because we were going to do a a logistical uh, multinomial regression, and which sounds it was actually a lot more exciting than it sounds because we were like it's statistically significant. Woo! But so I had to get up early, go all the way across town to uni. And so I cut through Richmond Center, which is a littler shopping mall, um, just right up the street from Foil Side. Because it's on a hill, it's just easier to go down through the shopping center, plus it's warm. And the center was open. Some of the shops, like, you know, they opened at 9, so they were still had their, their shutters down. But I took a picture, and I meant to tweet it, but then I just couldn't be arsed. But just, like, looking down the main drag at Richmond Center on the top floor, and all the Christmas lights are up, and all the kiosks are open, but... There were no people. There were no customers. Like, yeah. literally, like, it was like the two security people were, like, standing there having the crack at the door, and I was just walking through. And the only other person that I saw coming to Richmond Center was coming the other way from down at the bottom of the hill, cutting through with the escalators to get up at the top of the hill. So it was just, it's really funny because, like, no one seems to know what to do. No one seems to know how to capture that very ins particular insanity that we have about it. Yeah, and they're... they're... Franchise places have just been told to to do this whether it makes sense or not yeah. And then other ones are just like we're gonna go along with it because it's apparently a thing when it's not a thing It's it's like a bunch of people who are selling stuff are trying to create This thing out of pure will. Yeah, and it's like no Just give well, up on it. Please. Apparently, I mean, okay, so my company is a southern company Our, our headquarters are in Dublin our flagship um, uh, shop is in Dublin but the thing is that, I mean, there was allegedly a thing going on online that you'd save 10% as a Black Friday thing on our website, you'd save 10%. But, like, really, we kind of had to do it. I don't think the shop owner Kenny did anything. We had to do something just because the center was staying open and we couldn't just close it on normal time. But, like, it was just, it's just really funny because, I mean, I would explain to people how several, you know, several people die every year on Black Friday. My coworkers were like, what do you mean? I'm like, oh, well, there was a time that your man, the security guard, was trampled to death at Walmart. And they're just looking at me with their jaws on the floor. I'm like, yeah, you know. Well, the, I said, well, think about it this way. There's queues, so it's bound to be, and they're like, queue jumpers? I'm like, yeah, it's bound to be queue jumpers. And what's specific about America? I don't know. Everybody's armed. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. So a lot of people, I mean, there was someone shot in a shopping mall in New Jersey. There was a shooting. I don't know if it was a queue jump incident, but like, and I was like, yeah, people will stand outside at like three in the morning and someone's coming out with a door buster item they got, hold them up at gunpoint, stab them, take their stuff. And my coworkers were shocked. I'm like, oh yeah, several people die every year on Black Friday. But you have to think about so many people die every day. They're murdered every day in America. It's just, you know, that's just how it is. And then everyone's like, you know, gets that really sad look on their face and pet me on the head and be like, but that's okay. You'll, you'll be an Irish citizen soon. You're one of us. It's okay. I'm like, I don't thank you. Where's my point? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, I, I find the whole thing baffling. The only recent area I can see it taking off in the UK is like with online selling. Well, but I mean... They seem to want to be irritating about it. It's like, we got all these sales going on, but only for like an hour of the day and then we'll change it and you don't know what's on every hour so you have to come back every hour to see if there's anything you want on there. It's like, you fuckers! I can't be arsed. Yeah. I mean, the only thing, the only thing I might check tomorrow on Cyber Monday is um, I want uh, St um, Star Trek Beyond above, above and beyond. Was it above and beyond? Uh, no, just above. Just Star Trek Beyond. Star Trek Beyond. I really enjoyed it. We saw it in Canada with with Ned, right after Con Bravo, um, and so my shop has it on DVD for nine ninety nine. Tesco has it for ten pounds. Amazon has it for nine ninety nine, and I'm really hoping maybe like Black Friday will drop to seven ninety nine pounds sterling. If it does, I'll buy it. But really, that's the only thing. I mean, because um, I don't have your Christmas list yet, but your problem stuff is probably going to be used DVDs. Well, yeah, I, 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 a bunch of DVDs, <clears throat> books, and stuff like that. Like, I mean, I can see if you're in the market for. Okay, no, I take that back. You know that that food processor.
that it dropped five pounds since I added it like a year ago. Oh. If that goes on offer, I think that would be a good time to buy that. Okay. Because I, you guys, I need a food processor. You, you have no idea. But um, but yeah, like if you're in the market for something, like if you're like, look, my computer's dying. I need a new computer. Black Friday, it's you know everything's gonna be on offer. It's a perfect time. I'm in the market anyway for a new TV. That's fine. But like. If you're not shopping specifically for a present for someone, at that point, it just becomes spending money just because something's cheap. You yeah. know? And sometimes I have been in shops and I'm saying, am I buying this because I want it, because I will use it, or because it's on offer? Like, I almost bought a dime bar yesterday at the shop because they're about to expire, so they're marked down to 25p. I'm like, I'm not going to eat this. If I wanted to, I could buy a pack of four at the pound shop for a pound, and they'd still be 25p each. I'm only buying this because it's on offer, so I didn't buy Plus it. You Plus, you couldn't even give it to me, because I fucking hate dime bars. I love dime bars, and I eat them, eat them all. But, like, I mean, I think that's, that's the thing about, about Black Friday is you're, like, you feel like, I, well, okay, I imagine that, you know, people who shop on, you know, Black Friday feel like, I need to buy this because it's cheap, not because I actually need it or want it. I'll figure out, you know, There's that part other later. possibility is that some of them are going to be ones who are very poor who are using the opportunity to get something out of their price range. That's true. Okay, I didn't think of that. But then, then again, that's still really sad, too. Yeah. You know? I mean, like, I, I, I've, I've, since the election, I mean, I haven't been very public on, on media. Like, it's, it's, been, it's been a very... <clears throat> trying. Very, not trying. It's been a very disassociative experience. Because I'm living in another country. I mean, I was, I was actually... I was invited to, uh, to a, a reception being given by the American Embassy in Belfast. Um, through the uni, and I was invited to, uh, on election night, from 7 to 11, to, to, you know, mingle with other Americans, and quote-unquote watch the election, but I didn't, because I had, I had uni that day, and the bus to Belfast is an hour and a half, and the bus back, and I'd have to crash overnight in Belfast, I didn't want to, but, like, people here are watching it happen, almost like it's on TV, like, the standard joke I've been using is, hey, did you see Strictly Come Democracy last night, you know, like, and... It's so strange because I, I had so much to focus on the, the few days after the election as I had to put everything out of my mind and just focus on schoolwork because if I didn't, I wouldn't have been able to. I had two presentations and a coursework that had to be done and I was like, well, I just can't. But it does give you a bit of a perspective when you're, when you're looking at it from so far away, you know? It's, I always compare it to uh, me after the Brexit vote. I mean, not quite the same because obviously we're still in the UK here. However, Northern Ireland voted in favour of staying in the UK, and it was England that basically voted against it. So it's sort of similar. It's like we have to we're reacting to the idiots over there who caused it. Yeah, and I mean, like, we're technically not in danger because I once I'm done uni. I mean, even if I don't go right into grad school, we're going to move to the Republic. I'm going to become a citizen of the Republic because I'm married to a citizen. I don't need to go back to America. And it is very tempting to have this opinion of, well, that's them over there, but there's so many people that I know who are so scared mm -hmm. and who are dealing with such a resurgence of, of mental illness because of it. Um, and I, I said to my professor, and he agreed with me, that as psychologists, we will probably spend the rest of our careers, I mean, our, I say, me and, and my, my classmates, studying the effects of this past year. Because, um, I don't know how much people know about psychosis and the, the risks for psychosis, but a lot of it is tied to sociological factors. Um, do some reading, um, if you're interested, Richard Bentel. Richard Bentel and John Reed have written a lot about that. But the kind of large-scale disenfranchisement, disenfranchisement we're seeing in America and in the UK are some of the prime, the prime things that are risk factors for psychosis. <coughs> and it's scary. And I think, like, looking, looking at Thanksgiving and looking at, you know, Black Friday, from this viewpoint of having not been in the country, you know, for a few years, except, you know, that one time to visit, it's, it's I don't know, it gives you a different perspective. Like, we didn't, we didn't have dinner... Well, mostly because Hagen was house-sitting. <laughs> yeah, I'm house-sitting for until Tuesday. And I am, you know, I had a lot of work to do, but we're going to, uh, we're going to cook a goose in December because we saw a goose at Tesco. <coughs> and <coughs> I should probably mention this here, you know, if not here, you know, where else? Um, since the election, assuming the 
tangerine stained waste of seminal fluid does become president. Uh, Which still could technically not happen because yeah, that's how this year's it, gone. It's been a weird year. Um, Mary for president. Uh, it looks like um, neither, that neither of us are going to be setting foot in America until he's not president. Uh, it looks like. Unless Don't tell happen. my parents. They really want us to come visit Utah next summer. I would... I have no problem with going to Utah. I have a problem with paying for a flight to Utah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I... Only if we can stop for a week in Denver. Would not feel... Uh, no, let's I, just say that neither of us particularly want to add, add the stress... I want the added stress to our lives of having to deal with America right now. Yeah. That might change, but don't expect to see us at MAGFest. Well, I mean, that fest was always troublesome because of my uni schedule, but... Yeah, but just don't expect us to go back there. Con Bravo, on the other hand, where Canada is... welcomes everyone with open arms because basically, like, you know, Justin Trudeau is Jesus. <laughs> David Genola. Well, he's basically Jesus according to Kitty Marie. <laughs> now, with, uh, with Con Bravo, I'm hoping we get there again. I mean, uh... I'd like to. I, mean, oh, I absolutely love it. And so, I had fun doing a the, panel last year. The only issue I can see with that is financial. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I mean, if we can't do it this year, we can't do it. We'll take a year off. I mean, yeah. you know. But it's always fun, and the staff is amazing, and, you know, it's just a great yeah. it's a great time. But yeah. Okay, okay. I'll put this out here. If someone is running a convention in the United States and they want one or both of us and they want to, you know, arrange everything and pay for everything, <laughs> then we'll go. Other than that, probably not. And you'll, you'll probably go by yourself, because I can't, I can't take time um, off. But. It's, it's okay, I'm just giving them an out, because we know secretly that no one wants us at their cons. It's okay. Well, the, the taxi man, like, on the, my way over here, <coughs> we're actually recording my parents' lost house. That's why you can hear the ticking at, like, seven clocks in the living room. Um, not clocks. It's, it's it's timers for the uh, the, the heater he and yeah the internal heating. Bang and yeah. So if you're wondering what that is, you know, that's not your computer. It's actually us. But um yeah, he was saying. So what's all this Thanksgiving then? What's that all about? I was like, well, you know, he's like, so you you have that and you have Christmas too, and I was like, well, it's more like it's bigger than Christmas. He's like, it's bigger than Christmas. I'm like, no, the, the meal part of it. I'm like Thanksgiving, you get together. It's the purpose is to get together for the meal. Like Christmas, well, you have Christmas dinner, or you have a Christmas Eve, but there's like so many other things too, like Christmas parties. Like, oh, okay, I see. Yeah. And I realized like how shallow that sounds when I say it. No, we just get together to eat for one night. Well, with the, and I noticed the American Thanksgiving meal, traditional meal, is much more in common with the British slash Irish uh, Christmas dinner uh, than the American Christmas dinner is with ours. Yeah, well, the American Christmas dinner it's is... It's like ham, isn't it? Well, yeah, but, but it's so different though. Like, depending on your family. Mm. Because some families do do a turkey. Some families do a huge ham. And, you know, in my family, you'll find both. Oh, yeah, and you had, like, crabs and stuff. Well, no, that was Christmas Eve. Okay. My family meets on Christmas Eve and Christmas night. Um, it used to be at my grandmother's house. She used to do it both nights. And it was... Uh, Christmas Eve was at my family's house. And then Christmas night was at my Aunt Phyllis's house. Aunt Phyllis and Uncle Phil. And, but then... Uh, then uh, Michael Joe and Aunt Susan, they took over Christmas Eve. And Aunt Susan, one of the things, <coughs> one of the hobbies she got really into was cooking. And so she is a fucking, like, gourmet, like, chef now. Like, she just makes all this kind of stuff. And so one of the things she likes to make is these amazing, like, crab meat stuff things, like, but they're baked in the crab shells. And then she hand makes pierogies and just, ah, oh, just kill boss, just so much great stuff. And... You were, like, shocked. You were like, is this normal Christmas? I'm like, no, this is just because Aunt Susan can cook everything. <laughs> yeah, my issues with Christmas are somewhat lessened when I'm over in the United States because the Christmas is just subtly different enough. And, like, the, my the Aunt British, Phyllis's Christmas cookies are so fucking the, good. The British Christmas, when it, comes to, <coughs> when it comes to the meal and stuff, it's not very far removed from the Dickensian Christmas mm -hmm. because there's only been a hundred of them. It's hard to evolve that quickly. That's true. But I mean, like, it seems to me that a lot of the hearkening back to the American Christmas is, like, my parents' generation and hearkening back to how it was in the 50s. So that, like, you know, eventually when I'm elderly, like, you know, the millennials will be hearkening back to, like, the, the early 90s. And that's why they've played Doctor Who. Great. Uh, old Doctor Who Christmas specials. With Matt Smith. <laughs> I remember back in the day. 
But, but yeah, I mean, it's just such an interesting holiday to try to explain to somebody from another, another country, like, oh, we'll see the Pilgrims and the Indians, but I thought you guys killed all the Native Americans. Well, yeah, but, but the Pilgrims and the Indians, <laughs> shut up, pumpkin pie. I don't know. I do not like Thanksgiving. It is a horrible, horrible, horrible You did thing. like the meal that I made the first year that I came here. I went fucking yeah. all out. Yeah, you made a nice Got meal. Got my mom's recipe and everything. You made a nice meal. The, 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 the American <clears throat> holiday, though, I do not like. I don't know the origin of the Canadian one, but I doubt I'll dislike it as much. The Canadian one is probably like something like really... We're Canada now. Let's be friends. No, it was probably like something like really, really great that like... Oh, some, like, Toronto nearly burned down because of a fire, but everyone came together, and, and then everyone in Toronto had a feast, then, you know, the next year to commemorate how, you know, much they'd saved, and then it spread out. You know, it's, if, if you're Canadian, you know, comment below, but I'm sure it's got some kind of really heartwarming thing, like, Justin Trudeau rescued a kitten out of the tree. And <laughs> the one that, like, you know, he prevented George Washington from chopping down. And he said, George, I cannot tell a lie. Go across the border. It was after the War of 1812, yes. and Canada's like, We're gonna beat the Americans, let's eat food. <laughs> and yay, he said unto them, Bring your poutines of all flavors, and your beaver tails. Oh, uh, Canada has Quaff to say... the maple syrup liberally, and put the hockey on, eh? <laughs> Give thanks unto the Lord, Justin Trudeau. I'm at Canada... Beaver tails are good. The maple <coughs> lollipop things with the ice, they're cool. Maple syrup is fucking amazing. Poutine, though. You guys need a better thing to be really, really weirdly I proud of. I like poutine. It's like the disco fries that you could get at the Lanark Diner. Yeah, but that's... Oh, Lanark Diner. Diner of two L's. It's not amazing. It's, it's nowhere near good enough for a country of that size and stature to be so obsessed with and proud of. Yeah, but they're obsessed and proud of that and not nukes. You know, like yeah, I don't think they should find a better food. By to the be way, so if you ever with. want to know what the Lanark Diner is, you can Google it, or it also makes an appearance in the, in the Silver Linings Playbook, which is kind of funny because it's being portrayed as being like right down the street from Ridley Park, which it's not. It's in Lansdowne. <laughs> but anyway, so that's been us, honey. I have been the Omega Geek, and um, what are you thankful for this year? I'm thankful that I have a cat. He's thankful too. Actually, you can't see this, but the cat is curled up literally like a foot away from the tripod, right in front of the fire, and he's sleeping. Mary.